everybody. Jimmy with the Triple C Collective and Colin here. And we are ready to bring you Visions, episode, season two, episode five, um, Journey to the Darkhead by Mir Studio and yeah. by Studio Mer. And um, back to anime. Yeah, dude. Back to the anime style. They're from South Korea, which is great. Um, again, Visions season two. They were all about doing the global animation, like going to different countries and stuff, as we've seen in the previous four episodes. Every single one of those has been from a different country, from a different studio, which has been great. And, um, you know, Journey to the Dark Head is also no different. I love this episode. And yeah. the, the, the artwork in it is great. Like, from the beginning, like that, that watercolor, like fluorescent looking that green uh, mountain and stuff yeah like, yeah. Know, yeah 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 beautiful on that like rainy so let's just jump into the episode on that like if right. we start on a rainy wet planet we get that wide shot that's like showing some mountains and that color green like the beauty of like how it's just like it looks like it's hand painted and stuff like oh. yeah it, it's awesome. like a floor it's like I can't, I can't think of the word right now but it's like it's where like the rainbow shows up and everything basically the color scheme and yeah, it looks it looks hand painted, colored, uh, and it's we we go to this planet. We notice that it, it, they're picking up these stones, and yeah. they're uh, they basically like see the future or past or something going on through these stones, right? So these stones, like one things that they talk about, and obviously I'm gonna always highlight the filmmaker focus, is that they talk about the concept of oracle, like force right. oracles and stuff in this and like being able to to read the force and be oracles for it and all that kind of stuff and like this was awesome because that's what we get we get the rain kind of falling onto those rocks and then they have the awesome like little pictures and stuff and then they go away and you see the one dude just writing his record of it yeah the record keeper was cool he was uh he was important i think because he basically like was because she kept saying, like, well, the Sith are going to win, the Sith are going to win. And she's like, he's like, this isn't a Jedi temple. Like, we're not on a side. Uh, we're supposed to just record what we see. Yeah. And you're not strong enough in your in your ability yet. But she... Because the, it went away. And and that's yeah. what he alludes to, because it, like, went away and she wasn't right. able to fully, like, I don't know. Well, so it. let's get into what she sees. She sees two characters and then another character in the middle. Two characters look like they're fighting and then one character just, like, off in the center. Yep, and uh, she's unable to figure out what it is, what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, it just looks like two characters fighting with lightsabers, kind of, you know. Uh, and then yeah, off, right. Uh, because you you can't tell what it is. You can't tell if that's like a rope connecting them, or if it just happens to be some like billowing smoke that's just like kind of looking yeah. that way between them or whatever. Um, yeah, 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 uh, and so like that was all. That, that, that was just so cool seeing all of that she does say though that like because the the i guess the record keeper we can call him because he's not really named or anything in there the right, let's guy, call him the older, yeah. yeah the older guy writing the records um he is telling her well what do you feel about it like how does this like make you feel what do you what is this like like can you tell anything close to you and she is like well this is this does feel close to me but maybe in the future because yeah. like it feels distant but there's also a closeness to it and i was just like oh man this is just like cool stuff of uh, somebody who is not force sensitive but like we've never really seen this in star wars this idea of like this or yeah they're i guess they're force sensitive in the way that they're 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 this force is going uh they're the force is flowing through them yeah and and, and but the, the force is just used differently in, the, in these in this group of people and they're supposed to just be like clairvoyance or whatever and that's the problem with clairvoyancy, especially when the message is very unclear like this. It's like, okay, now what? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, sweet. Uh, you're gonna die in two days. Okay, what well, can I? Can I not? <laughs> or is that not. just and You know, is it written in stone, or is it? You know, can it be wiped away like the rain? Clear. Like anyway, so it was. It was a beautiful metaphor to start the episode. And uh, she's not she's not taking that line down. She wants to do something about whatever this vision was. Like you said, she felt it felt close to her. So, right. And um, so, like one thing we get though at the first time of this, and it's not the first time we'll hear this of like war and conflict are constants. Like 
the evil and good are always in like an ebb and flow of each other. Right. And that's where <laughs> the record keeper is also explaining that that's just what they do. That they just right. keep the record because the stuff is always changing. And the last thing that she le- that we get with the record keeper here is like, why does no one leave? And why does no one cut off the dark head of these stones up here that we see in this like ring? And then we right. get the cut to the Jedi Temple, which I loved. Um, mm-hmm. This little Jedi Temple scene, um, or the Jedi Council scene, because it's obviously very reminiscent of like all the Jedi Council stuff that we saw in like the prequel trilogy and everything like that. Um, but I love that. Uh, the- yeah, I'm unsure of what the time is of this, uh, of what's going on here, but it's, oh. it kind of doesn't matter. It's, 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 it, all I like is that there's still a council going on and there's still masters sending out younglings, whatever to do. So I can tell you that due to the filmmaker focus, they tell you that this takes place before the prequel trilogies takes place before every single star Wars movie that has been released. So like high Republic probably area. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this could be like literally days before the prequel trilogy. It could be years before the prequel trilogy. But that's like where we're at. Like we're but in the Republic's that... in charge. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But the Republic is there. But it's before the pre, before any movies we've seen. It's kind of what they uh, is what they allude to here. So like for her, she just looks like she's like what maybe ten years older, five years older. If she was like maybe ten or fifteen or something, like when we first see her, she looks like she's aged up a little bit, and she's like going presenting her mission to the. Uh, yeah. To the Jedi Council here being like, I grew up on a hidden temple on Dolagark. And, you know, they have this, like, it's out on the Outer Rim. We've got these two balancing heads of statues of light and dark. And I think we got to destroy the dark. It can give a new balance to, like, the fight against, uh, you know, the Sith and everything. (laughs) And I love what the one Jedi Council member says. Who's like, oh, if we break the mirror, we alter what the mirror reflects, and then therefore we can change. And uh and like she's like, we'll just like uh she suggests like that toll guy. Um, I gotta say, the American or the English dub voice actor actors and actresses for uh Ara is the uh pilot who we don't really get named until like the very end of the episode yeah then we've got her jedi the girl we've been seeing the whole episode yeah yeah yeah. yeah. the girl we've been seeing the whole episode then we get her soon to be uh seeing jedi companion toll who's pretty awesome and then we get um the who we'll see later on spoilers a sith lord beachin um Ara, ara the pilot is um voiced by ashley park uh the uh toll the jedi who oh, yeah, really with yeah, yeah yeah ashley park does ara um eugene what um eugene lee yang Le- yang is the guy who voices toll and then daniel day kim does the voice of beach nice yeah. yeah and like daniel day kim was like um sign me up like they right. you want me to do star wars and be a villain like yeah sign me up for it i'm here <laughs> Um, which was like really awesome. Uh, but also on a side note here, Ashley Park in the filmmaker focus, she talks about being a star Wars fan from like before any of this and how, like when she got her like emailed offer where like reach out, like, Hey, are you interested? Like, or would you be interested in like doing a, a voice dub for it? She was like, yes, sign me up. So like, it's also awesome. that Like you all that we're also seeing like the, filmmakers are all again the filmmakers are also always loving star wars and wanting to tell like their own story but now they're also giving us like a little bit more of the voice actors who are also like oh no no, no, no. star wars is great like we want to be a part of it like like that's one of the things about visions that i love is that there's just so I mean, much this fun. episode alone i want the action figures of like these yeah. characters are so cool right they're so great like jedi usually are cool looking <laughs> in yes. my opinion they're, they're they're decent looking but he was so cool looking in this uh so yeah. So let, let's dive into it. So we get Toll, um, and we get like a little training thing here. Toll is like sitting, meditating with a uh, a Jedi master, and then we get like thrown into a flashback where he has his first Jedi master master get killed by Beechin here, and yep. Beechin is awesome. 
Um, I like his name. It kind of sounds like Bitchin. Yep, Bitchin. sure does. Bitchin. Bitchin. Um, so like, I like that. It's really awesome. Um, My boy Bitchin. Yeah, he's cool. Like, uh, he was. It, it was. A, this was a uh, clearly a traumatic event that happened to his uh, him, and he's still being. Um, he's still being haunted by this Bitchin character, and you could tell it maybe isn't dealt with, and he's he's ready to deal with it in his own way. Right. And that's like one of the cool things because the uh the writer of it talks about how like she was in uh grade school or middle school when the prequel trilogy comes out. Yeah. And one of the things that she always wanted to see from the prequel trilogy is how some of the Padawans have dealt and what they have seen as like these crazy traumatic events, aka the survivors of Order Sixty Six, which you've seen with like Grogu and stuff that we've seen deal with like the man in the Mandalorian and whatnot. Now, like we've seen a couple of those flashbacks now, which has been like really interesting to see. One of the things she wanted to like explore was the horrors that a Padawan like can um, be faced endure. with. Or see, yeah. yeah. Endure at such a young age. And at, I mean, if you've caught up with, if you're caught up, if you're tapped in with like all of the animation and like all the star Wars lore stuff, like tales of the Jedi, like give you, baby Ahsoka and like seeing her story as like a baby going on to like what we eventually get in Clone Wars and stuff. So like, it's crazy how much that um, something so simple, like seeing the Padawans in the prequel trilogy, getting the order 66 and how this is like stayed with like the writer for like 20 years. Like I need to see this. I need to see yeah. like what these characters kind of deal with. And it's like, Oh man, that's a cool, it's a cool exploration that like, we don't get without visions. We don't get yeah. without the exploring of like different. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth things. exploring in a movie as much uh, that's that's dealing with all these uh, twenty characters. You know what I mean? In a Star Wars movie. Um, but yeah, I, I love. So they go off on their adventure now. They're ready to head off to this uh, this temp this temple for lack of a better word. I don't know, a statue, two headed statue. Yep. Light and light and dark, and it, it, they start getting chased. Uh, almost pretty immediately when they're entering atmosphere and stuff. But they, first, we they're, they're, their little banter back and forth is pretty cool. Right. So they get that stop in the shop where he's like, where yeah. Tull's like, Tull's like, you don't need any of this stuff. You got a Jedi with you. Like, he's basically like, yeah. you got a Jedi with you, baby. You don't need any, you don't need anybody but me. <laughs> right. And she's right, like, right. well, you know, we've only got one shot at this. So, you know, I'm not gonna like just, yeah, so she's gearing up. time and, and like, like not take my chances and not, you know, like, cross those T's, dot those I's, and, you know, get it done. And so, yeah, she gets her, like, um, what we find out to be, like, gravity or, like, sticking gloves. Gauntlets. basically. Yeah, yeah, it's sticking gauntlets, um, which is awesome. I love the shopkeeper because the shopkeeper's talking about parachutes and bombs that she's got. And he's like, oh, what are you doing? Are you going to blow up? Everything. Thing? That they bring cool. up here is is end up being uh, used in the episode too. Let's it, right. So like that's one of those things that like when you hear the parachute, it's like I first time watching the episode, totally. Whew, yeah. Right. It's Chekhov's gun though. Yeah, they've just mentioned some things. It's like oh, it could just be shop talk, you know. Yeah, and um, so yeah, it could be just like shop talk and everything like that. Then we get it, but also in the shop. Cole is by the door, and we get a we get a connection basically between Beechin and Toll. We get that like force connection that we saw kind of between uh, Ray and uh, Kylo and like right. Rise of Skywalker, where they're like they're just kind of drawn. I mean, we've also seen it with like Luke and Vader and like Jedi and everything, like like Luke being like I'm right. during the mission, I shouldn't be here, and like right. you know, just feeling Vader and whatnot there. Um, so like that was another great callback to what we've what we've gotten before with Jedi and everything and like the original trilogy and like all the other stories, but it was also great to see here because it was like, it was that huge distance. And then we get that like awesome um, talk uh, or like the awesome showing of uh, Beechin's like helmet, which is this like yeah. cow mask kind of like design, which is like, yeah. this, uh, which is like this Japanese kind of like ancient kind of culture kind of like look and stuff that yeah, they look cool. to like, pull from and now that you said korean i'm even more interested like in or, i'm sorry i'm right. sorry yeah it, 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 it's the it, it's a korean mask i shouldn't have said japan yeah. but well um, yeah i mean and, i get it um but then 
yeah, they start chasing. The chase happens, and Beechin basically shoots down the ship of Ara and Tull, but Ara and Tull are still able to somehow maneuver the ship into Beechin's ship, take right. out one of his wings, and jump out on their, like, speeder. And, speeder let, button, me tell, yeah. and, and let me just tell you, dude, it's just like, it's pure Star Wars here, man. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, Star, Star- R-, R is a pretty cool pilot. She's a, uh, for, for, you know, for to growing up fair, in, on a planet like that, she's a pretty decent pilot. She, um, she reminded me a lot of, like, Hera. Yeah. Um, As, like, a pilot. Like, not to take anything against Rey or anything against, like, Han Solo, but, like, just, like, the crazy maneuvers and stuff that no, she No, more grounded. Years. Like, in, I, I, yeah. I, I, I felt, I felt Hera. Felt a lot of yeah. Hera energy here. Now, that could be me just being excited that Mary Elizabeth Weinstead is playing Hera in the, like, live action stuff, which I'm here for all day. Uh, but, like, <laughs> this Ara, like, uh, Ara moment, uh, like, really gave me, like, Hera, Hera energy. Yeah, for sure. And I loved it. And, um, and then this is, like, the final act here. We get, they basically get up there, they start running on the ring. Toll, like, how about Toll doing that forced throw of Ara yeah. from the speeder? She's like, yeah. all right, he, the speeder's not going to make it. I'm going to need your help here, Toll. He's like, I wish you would have told me that before. And no. it's like, falling down onto the speeder and they're like ah! right. it's awesome man yeah and her um, toll and beach and when they finally crash the speeder and then toll and beach and start fighting she uh ara starts setting up the bombs on the on one of the statue heads but this is when the the statues start lighting up and this scene is so cool looking with the blue and the the red reminisce and the lightsaber fight that's going on above them with the blue and the red lightsabers and it's just yeah. um it's so cool and uh, she's about to blow the head off of the one and notices that the energies are kind of swapping in and out. And it's not necessarily in one head or the other. Right. Um, so, yeah, and the yeah, fight continues. Yeah. Once the energy starts to mix, like, throughout the whole fight, you start hearing uh, Beach and say, this is pointless. Join me. This is pointless. Just join me. And then once you start seeing the mixture of, like, the lights and stuff and being like, oh, man, this is what he meant by it being pointless, that, like, <laughs> he is pulling out that anger and stuff out of Toll, but Toll has that inner struggle, as we even see. Like, we get that. We literally see the inner like, struggle. Like, 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 we literally see the white background. We get the, with the blue highlight, basically kind of like my shirt, the blue highlight of Toll, and then we get the red highlight and, like, the red yeah. kind of, like, Red eyes, eyes, yellow eyes, yeah. Yeah. It was cool, yeah. So we see him battling his inner demons at this moment, and then he realizes why his master sent him to this, and he thinks it's to sacrifice himself. He thinks it's to, it's to literally give himself away. And in this moment, you realize this is the scene. This is the scene she saw at the beginning. Uh, right. She's standing there about to blow up the bombs. She can't. Their uh, toll's he getting choked got, out. Got yeah, toll's pages. getting choked out by this cool sit. I don't know. He's got Beechin's got this cool. Uh, mechanical spot doc ock looking thing going on so and uh yeah yeah he, he basically is choking him out with that and she uh ara makes a decision to use to bring the bombs back and send them up and and use them to fight this battle right in front of her right to shoot at like beaching and stuff so yeah. one thing from the filmmaker focus, them them. yeah one thing from the filmmaker focus they talk about wanting a a tofan or like a trident type a weapon originally for Beechin, but then as they were going through like finishing the writing and finishing their like short and stuff, they realized that the lines and stuff that he had made him a little bit more like slimier and like more snake like. So then they decided to give it like that like lasso kind of snake looking like right. idea of it, the Doc Ock look and like symbiotic kind of looking. And um it's great. Like that whole battle yeah. is awesome seeing them all get like mixed up and the colors and stuff is awesome. Like, dude. And then we get the like beach in holding out Tao or toll like over it. And, um, Paul just realizing this is my move moment. This is, like, I gotta say like, for grabbing his, uh, his saber back. But it, dude, we saw a decapitation. Yeah, we did. Star Wars. Yeah, he cut his. He cut the. He cut Beach and set off, and like, Aang just falls. He's ready to go. He lets his saber go. He's falling down. He's, he's, he's going through the motions. He's ready to give up. He's, he's, he sacrificed himself. He did what his masters wanted to, and it's a, 
but that's when Ara comes flying out of nowhere and grabs him. And this is when the parachute comes in handy. I'm like, parachute! (laughs) She's like, wake up, tall! Yeah, yeah. Wake up! And he's like, huh? Huh? He wakes up. Obviously, he's a little concussed. He's just got, like, because aside from, like, cutting that dude off, all of the bombs and stuff had just, like, gone off around them as well. Um, And falling, free falling uh, will make you fall. Yeah, Yeah, free fall will make you fall out. That whole fallout stuff was just yeah. wild, dude. The save and everything. And then, the, yeah, they parachute down. And Tull's like, I needed this mission, I think, as much as you needed this mission. Yeah, yeah. And Ara doesn't see it. At that She kind of sees it as a negative. At first. Um, it's like, yeah. oh, this is, you know, we're basically, you know, Sisyphus. We're going to fight one battle. There's always a the next battle. And he's just like, well, that's the odd the, the battles don't matter any less just because they keep happening. Right. Us, us, if we stop fighting, that would be the bad part. Well, because that's what he talks about. He's like, there's always an, a good, again, uh, a reflection from the beginning. It's rhyme. It's like poetry. It's rhymes. Um, and he's he's talking, Toll is talking about the balance of good and evil always happening. And the next wave of despair also carries hope with it. So, yep. like, that's the ongoing thing that it is, is that there, as long as there's hope, there's a way to, like, overcome it. And when despair is just completely overrun and there is no hope, that's when you're screwed. But as yeah. long as there's still a hope coming in on that wave, even if there is despair there, there's always yeah, a there chance that. Yep. And so that was really great. Um, I loved all of this. Um, again, filmmaker focus, like, like, that's the end of the episode then. It ends with great. them like basically going off as a new team. It was kind of cute. I like, hopefully they they'll pick up sometime. I don't know. Give us a, uh, like a comic or something. They were razzing yeah. each other back and forth. He's yeah. like, "Well, you crashed the ship. You crashed the speeder. Whoa, yeah. crashing the ship is way worse than crashing." Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is great. Um, actually, one of the things that I do want to say about the filmmaker focus here is. Some of the statues and stuff were inspired by the uh, Hate statues in the uh, in the uh, Gungunbok Gung Palace in Seoul, South Korea, which is like really great because if you go to that filmmaker oh, focus, they, they they show some of that stuff and they and like they talk about it in that filmmaker focus that this part of like where they look at for this inspiration feels like a place where it is the modern uh, like the. <clears throat> most historic in the modern me. And I just got to say, go check this stuff out. Mirror Studio did a great job with this. Um, we're going to wrap up ourselves here. Go check out the filmmaker focus. I am Jimmy with the Triple C Collective. I'm Colin. This is Shay. With, <laughs> with the Triple C Collective. We want to thank you all for joining us. Please like and subscribe to our video and to our channel. And we hope you stay safe. And as always, may the force be with you.